On August 15, 1926, Siegfried and Augusta Wilner welcomed into the world their only child, Helmut, born during the Weimar Republic in München Gladbach, Germany. Helmut Wilner's father, Siegfried, was a World War I war hero who, as a forward artillery officer in both the Eastern and Western fronts, had his horse shot out from under him and was awarded the Iron Cross for Valor under fire during his four years of service at the front. After World War I, Siegfried worked as a representative for a silk tie company and the family lived a typical middle-class life. München Gladbach was a predominantly Catholic city with a sizable Jewish population with a large synagogue in the center of town. The Wilner family lived in a large house near the main square. Helmut attended both public and Jewish schools and was brought up knowing Jewish traditions and customs. Albert Siegfried Wilner was born on March 19, 1960 in Stuttgart, Germany to Eddie and Johanna Wilner. Upon graduation with a degree in political science and Russian studies, he was commissioned a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army. After a 25-year career where he distinguished himself as a helicopter pilot, parachutist, U.S. defense attache in Taipei, and a professor at the United States Military Academy at West Point, he retired as a colonel. He is now a senior national security analyst living in Colorado Springs. He is named for his grandfather and his great-grandfather. During the night of November 9th and 10th, 1938, Nazi party stormtroopers carried out a pogrom against the Jews throughout Germany. Hundreds of Jews were killed, over 7,000 businesses were damaged or destroyed, 267 synagogues burned, including the Grand Synagogue in München Gladbach. Over 30,000 Jewish men were arrested, including Eddie Wildner's uncles, Leo and Eric, who were sent to the Dachau concentration camp. Nazi SA were in here and they were breaking all the and throwing everything out the window. And then his father um, so anyway. The crystal night happened in Germany. My father decided at that time that his son has to get out of Germany if he cannot get out of Germany. And my father was one of those Germans who believed because he had served in German army World War I that they would not touch him since he was decorated. And in the beginning they did make exceptions, but later on it was all the same. When he decided it wouldn't, it would be the same like everybody else, he wanted to get me out of Germany. So he sent me, he, they put me on a train to Brussels, Belgium, where I was picked up in Brussels by a, a Jewish refugee organization which placed me with a Dutch family. Following the night of broken glass, the Wilner family is forced out of their home and take up residence in an apartment near the railroad station. Siegfried is fired from his job. On December 8th, right after receiving a passport now. and permission to leave Germany, Helmut Wilner is put on a train by his parents and sent to Brussels, Belgium. 
takes with him a suitcase with some clothes and a silver kiddush cup. Hamut is picked up by the Joint Distribution Center, a Jewish refugee organization, and placed with the League family. He is given the name Eddie because there is still anti-German feelings because of the First World War. Siegfried and Augusta eventually receive permission to travel to Belgium. Siegfried arrives on January 27, 1939, and his wife, Augusta, joins him on April 6th. They are housed separately from Eddie, who is attending a Flemish school and feels it best for him to stay with his host family. The Wilders are helped by the Refugee Assistance Committee, but Augusta, without authorization to work, does menial jobs to help support the family. As persecution of the Jews in Germany worsens, Siegfried continues his efforts to leave Europe and immigrate to Brazil or Uruguay. Uh, my father was considered a political refugee from Germany. Now, political refugees from Germany were not just Jews, but they were communists, Democrats, anybody who had fled Germany because of Hitler. And when the war started, the Belgians and the French uh, arrested everybody that was German, the men first, or mo mostly men, in some cases some women. But my mother and I did not get arrested because we were German. My father was arrested because he was a German. And they knew that he was Jewish, but these were the laws, and they arrested everybody who was German and put them in internment camps, not concentration camps, but internment camps in southern France. It's maybe about halfway full. It's not the talks. <laughs> Actually, old for you. I just got a collar of it. Now, at the time my father was arrested by the police, of course, Belgian police. We only knew that all these men were being transported to France because the German advance came very fast and they had to put them somewhere. At that time we decided, my mother and I decided, or rather my mother decided, that we should go and look for my father. We knew southern France, we had some names, but we weren't sure. So we tried to get across the border ahead of the German army into France. 